Okay, so this time I am reading you out of Walt Disney's America. I don't know how long I've had this book. A really long time. Uh, I'm going to read you the story of Johnny Appleseed because that's the shortest one I could find and I need... I have a timer set to make to remind me to get back to my other stuff. All right, so Johnny Appleseed. Okay. There was one thing Johnny Appleseed liked to do better than anything else. That was to find a sunny spot and dig a little hole and plant an apple seed. For he knew the seed would grow into a sturdy apple tree. Johnny dug his little holes and planted apple seeds, and he dug and he planted some more until the whole countryside around his home was dotted with fine young apple trees. I don't know what I'll do when there's no place left for planting apple trees, said Johnny to his animal friends on the farm. One day, as he was walking down the road looking for a spot to plant just one more apple tree, Johnny heard the sound of singing coming closer and closer. Get on a wagon rolling west out to the great unknown. Get on a wagon rolling west or you'll be left alone. Then as Johnny watched, down the road came a very long line of covered wagons drawn by great oxen. Beside each wagon walked a tall, strong man dressed in deerskin. Each man had a rifle swinging at his side. These were the pioneers. The pioneers were taking their families off into the great empty lands of the West to build new homes. Come along, boy, the pioneers shouted at Johnny when they saw him stand there at the roadside. Come West, young fellow, come along with us. But I can't be a pioneer, said Johnny. I'm not tall and strong. I couldn't chop down trees to build a log cabin. I couldn't clear fields to plant corn. I guess there's nothing much that I can do out west. The pioneers were not listening. They were marching ahead, still singing as they went. Soon their wagons vanished from sight around the turn of the road. Only the words of their song floated back to Johnny on the breeze. You'll be left alone. I wish I could go west too, said Johnny to himself. You can, Johnny, said a voice beside him. It was Johnny's guardian angel speaking. Not all the pioneers have to cut down trees. You can be a pioneer who plants them. Wherever there are homes, son, the folks will need apple trees. Why, Johnny Appleseed, you just think of the things that apples make. There's apple pies, yummy, and apple fritters, yummy. Apple cores to feed the critters, tasty apple cider in a glass. There's apples baked and boiled and frizzled, taffy apples hot and sizzled, and there's always good old apple sass. There's also apple butter, which is my fave. You're needed in the West, young Donny Appleseed. You have a job to do. But I have no covered wagon, said Johnny. I have no knife and gun. Shucks, said the guardian angel to Johnny. All that you will need out West is a little pot to cook in and a stock of apple seed and the good book to read. That's wonderful, said Johnny. I have a pot to cook in and my book and apple seed. I can start right away. I'm off for the West, Mr. Angel, this very day. Of course, before he left for the West, Johnny stopped to see his friends, the animals on the farm. I hate to say goodbye, he told them, because you've been such good friends to me. I sure will miss you when I'm out there all alone. The animals looked sorrowful. They knew that they would miss Johnny, too. Well, so long, he said at last. Then away down the road to the West he went, young Johnny Appleseed. The West was mostly forest in those days. And that forest was big and deep and dark, a mighty fearsome place, you might think, for one young man to be all alone without a knife and without a gun. But Johnny Appleseed never thought of being afraid. He just marched along the narrow forest trail, singing a merry song. And as he marched, he looked to the right and to the left, watching for bright sunny spots to plant his apple seeds. No, Johnny was not afraid in the forest, but he was lonely. He had to admit that. It had been some days since he had seen a covered wagon train or a single pioneer, and he missed his animal friends on the farm. Of course, Johnny was not really all alone in the forest. He just thought he was. On every side, from behind every tree, sharp little bright little forest eyes kept watch as he marched along. And as they watched, the little forest folk wondered, for the animals did not like men. 
The only men they knew were the tall, strong pioneers. They cut down trees to build cabins. They cleared away thickets to make fields. They shot wild animals for food and fur. Naturally, the forest folk did not like that. So they hid and watched as Johnny Appleseed came down the path all alone. He doesn't look like the others, whispered a chick chipmunk. He's not very tall. He doesn't look very soft, strong, said a squirrel. He has no knife or gun, said the smallest bunny. Still, he is a man, the gentle deer replied. The gentle deer reminded them, so we must be very careful. And they were. They watched ever so quietly and ever so cautiously as Johnny Appleseed walked along. At last he came to a sunny little open spot among the forest trees and he stopped short. This looks like a right nice spot, said he, for me to plant an apple tree. So Johnny set down his little cooking pot and his Bible and his packet of apple seeds, and he picked up a long straight stick, which he, which he found there on the ground. This is a fine straight stick for digging my little holes, said he. But the animals watching from behind the trees thought it was a gun. Danger, they whispered. The man has a gun. Run, run, run. At the signal, all the animals started to run as fast as they could. Off in all directions, they scattered through the forest. But just as the smallest bunny started to run, he caught one fist, one foot in a twisted vine. He squirmed and twisted as hard as he could, but he could not jerk himself loose. Oh dear, how sad, whispered the other animals as soon as they knew. And from their hiding places farther back in the woods, they watched to see what would happen to the smallest bunny. Is someone there called Johnny Appleseed? for he had heard the forest folk racing away to their new hiding places. It would be nice to find a friend, said Johnny to himself. He called again, but there was no answer. Pushing the bushes aside with his long straight stick, Johnny Appleseed stepped into the forest. And there, while the watching animals held their breath in fright, Johnny Appleseed found the smallest bunny with his foot caught in the twisted vine. Well, said Johnny Appleseed softly, what has happened to you, little fellow? And very gently, Johnny Appleseed untwisted the vine from around the foot of the smallest bunny and set him free. Just as soon as the smallest bunny was free, he started to run into the forest. I wish you wouldn't run away, called Johnny Appleseed after the smallest bunny. It is lonely in the forest for me, and I would like to be your friend. The smallest bunny did not answer. Instead, he turned and hopped back to where Johnny was still sitting. Then he put his soft nose into Johnny Appleseed's hand and twizzled twiddled his whiskers in a friendly way. The other animals were amazed. Why, this man is not bad, they said. He's nice and friendly. So one by one, the animals crept out from their hiding places farther back in the woods and gathered around Johnny Appleseed. Before long, Johnny was surrounded by his new forest friends. Well, he chuckled happily, this is as nice as being home on the farm. And from that day on, Johnny Appleseed was never lonely again. He wandered on through the lands of the West. Whenever he came to a sunny little open spot among the forest trees, he planted his apple seeds. And as Johnny Appleseed planted his trees, he sang his merry song. Apple pies and apple fritters, apple cores to feed the critters, tasty apple cider in a glass, apples baked and boiled and frizzled, taffy apple, taffy apples hot and sizzled, and there's always good old apple sass. As the years passed, there were more and more farms through, through the wide land and farmhouses and people. And in almost every farmyard throughout the West, there were spreading apple trees which had been planted by Johnny Appleseed. He was a welcome guest in all these farm homes. And Johnny liked to come and visit for a barn raising or a house raising or a quilting or corn husking bee for then friends would gather from near and far. But between times, Johnny kept on the move. There was still much woodland there in the West. Days often passed when Johnny did not see a covered wagon or a log cabin or a sign of a pioneer. But he was never lonely in those wild western woods, for as he came singing along, out from behind the bushes and trees came squirrels and deer and bunnies and all the other forest folk. This is the man, they would whisper. He carries no knife and he carries no gun. He is a true friend to us all. And the smallest bunny would hop up close to Johnny Appleseed and twiddle his whiskers in the friendliest way. No, Johnny was never lonely now, for every animal in the whole wide forest was a friend to Johnny Appleseed. And so, 
the moral of that story is be nice and you know have good hair days um i'm gonna try to read more frequently because i've been missing too many sundays and i might not read them all on sundays but uh as you can see i have a stack and that is not even close to all of them i do have diary of a wimpy kid but i don't know if that's chapters or i don't i haven't looked at it so i don't know what's in it um anyway brian nathaniel langston and whoever else is out there watching this is grandma or as ryan calls me obachan so sayonara from obachan and have a great day and I love you. Yeah, I don't know you, but I love you anyway, because you are worth loving.